Today I'm here with John Davidson, the owner of a j Unique Boutique out here in St. John, New Brunswick. How are you doing today, John? Pretty good. Thanks for coming out, man. Yeah. Nice meeting you. Thanks for having me. It's been great. We're going to start off. Can you just tell me a little bit about yourself? Uh, I'm 34 years old. I uh, just recently had a baby. Uh, I'm engaged to my beautiful fiance who we started this business together with uh, a couple years ago. And just basically between my horse, my family, and the business, it pretty much just takes up all my time. So nice. Just a hard working family man. Nice. And so A in the A and J. A is Amelia. Yeah. And J is John. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. When did you open Unique Boutique? We opened in January of 2018. Awesome. Why did you name the store A and J Unique Boutique? It's just something that we came up with. Uh, we wanted something catchy, and when we actually looked up the dictionary terms for Unique and Boutique, it was actually like a perfect fit for our shop, exactly. So nice. We kind of just it stuck and. We like it, we roll with it. Mm -hmm. Nice. What was kind of your introduction to Hetty Glass? Like when was the first time you ever saw like your first Hetty Glass and kind of went down that uh, road? Probably just a buddy of mine had a grass blower piece, just an older, like a piece that he'd made at a festival years and years ago. And that was like the first time that I've ever seen a Hetty piece or a piece made by a, an artist, so to speak. And yeah. Yeah, it was kind of cool, and I reached out to Grassblower. He was the first person that we've ever had in the shop as a, an a, a Canadian artist. And yeah, yeah it was before we had Instagram, I reached out via his website, got his email address, and shot him an email. And yeah. How does Instagram or just social media in general help your business? Uh, it just gets it out there to a wider audience. I mean, it's. It's, it's a challenge to sell a piece that's you know over five hundred dollars. So to have it, it appeals to a broader audience, I guess you could say, and people who are looking for that type of stuff know where to look, and it's just available for for more, more people to see. I guess you'd say definitely. Yeah. So, in terms of your audience in St. John, can you describe that to me? Like, what are people buying in your shop here when they come to the store? Uh, when they're coming to the store, they're buying anything from glass accessories, sports bangers, uh, thrift clothing, like I said, rocks, crystals, jewelry. Yeah. There's a there's a wide range, you know, glass. We do offer some proto glass as well, just because that's what most of the other shops around town have as well. So in order to stay competitive, we do offer, you know, we have to offer a range of different products, right? So yeah but it's transitioned more so into a lot more Canadian glass lately as of, as of late. Definitely. What inspired you to open the shop? Uh, probably that would be my fiance for sure. Like I said, it was, it was her dream to have a business and I was just, like I said, I was working a nine to five at a call center and she found the perfect location right close to where I had actually grown up and she just decided that she was going to go with it and yeah. she got a business number and I came home from work one day and she had it all legit so yeah. I just quit my job and followed her dream and Hustle. the rest is history I should say. That's great man. What makes your store different than other head shops? Like I said it's the offers of different aspects you know that you don't really see like I said there could be a group of you know 50 60 year old ladies buying secondhand clothes in here shopping for crystals or gems while yeah. a group of 20 something year old kids are in here shopping for bombs right so it's just it's it's unique in that factor i guess you could say it's i've never quite seen a shop like it myself but Definitely. it's everything that we have a passion for right would you say maybe that's why it's successful for you is because it's something you guys are passionate about it's easy oh, for you guys yeah absolutely it's doesn't feel like I'm coming to work every day even when I'm talking to people straight making deals when I'm home you know on Instagram and talking with collectors and people it's you know it doesn't feel like a job to me it's and uh, customer service has always been first and foremost with our shop 100% right so, yeah uh, you'll always feel like you're getting a good deal or you'll feel like you're getting a good customer experience when you're shopping with us for sure, for sure. yeah definitely. so in terms of being a business owner you mentioned you just had a baby um, how yeah. is that with being a business owner and uh, managing? It's that's challenging life? in itself, basically because I'm not able to be home as much, you know, with the baby and you know me and Amelia. We always were a huge team here. She worked every day with me, so 
it's you know a lot more burden I guess is falling onto my shoulders at the shop which is not a big deal you know I'm, I'm okay with it but not being home with the family a lot you know that's a little sometimes that's a rough a little bit rough definitely that's the roughest part for me but. for sure in terms of the actual business itself what are some challenges that you face <clears throat> uh it's again I never really if you would ask me three years ago if I was going to be you know a business owner of a successful head shop sending bongs or rigs across the country I just I wouldn't have thought yeah. that right so every day there's a new challenge just to learning new things here I guess you could say you know being a business owner doing the numbers the taxes you know that's there's a lot inventory and yeah. you know there's a lot of numbers and just yeah I don't know it's it's a lot to take in and at the end of the day it's you know, it wears on you after a while, for sure. But Definitely. You gotta, you gotta put your head down and keep plugging away because it's your business and it's, it's basically like your child, right? Yeah. So you have to baby that. <laughs> for sure. And treat it like that. So, in terms of the glass shop portion of the store, what were your first three months looking like in terms of getting like inventory and getting it all set up? Uh, it was a little scattered. I mean, you never go into it, you never really know what you know what to buy I, I was like literally I bought domes and nails and shit it's stupid little things right things that I ended up throwing in the garbage a year later it's just you never know like it's just lear I've learned a lot like what the local market is like what they purchase and what you know what the repetitive sales are like and what online sales are like and what you know it's just not everything that I like is what everybody else likes so yeah. it's you know it's learning what to bring in and you know, dealing with only so much money that you can deal with financially and stuff, right? It's a challenge that way. So, mm -hmm. you know, to have a lot of glass and stuff, it looks cool, but you got to sell it too, right? Yeah. In order to pay the bills. So Definitely. It's learning what to bring in and learning what sells, I guess, is... You know. For sure. And so you mentioned that other shops in your particular area are, like, mostly imported glass. How important is you educating the customers on like the artist behind the Canadian glass to uh, making like a sale or to influencing them to buy in the huge. future. It's huge. Honestly now it's like these guys are like celebrities now like people like Grass Blower and like Clark's Glass Works, Maritimer. If you say those words with anybody in the shop like anybody that's in here knows who those guys are right? Yeah. And so it's and again like their quality speaks to themselves the customer knows where it was made how it was made they can hop on their Instagram and watch their pieces be made live right it's, yeah. just, it's a whole other experience rather than buying something that was made in a factory you know many miles away for you know peanuts right so it's just I don't know I feel better selling a, a Canadian piece than you know a mass-produced piece that any shop can sell right definitely now in terms of like when you're buying new pieces from an artist how does that kind of process go uh, How much fun is that? That's the funnest part. Uh, I'm like, I have fun with it now. I like to throw together like, you know, a custom piece or whatever for myself because, you know, if I think something that will sell fast and yeah. uh, it's, that's the funnest part, honestly, and, you know, dealing with all these amazing artists and, you know, so many of them, like I said, if you look in, uh, if I look at my TD banking app, I can scroll down <laughs> to the list of glass blowers that I've thrown money to and yeah. that I support it. It's, uh, it's a very long list and it's only getting bigger, right? So, Definitely. Yeah, yeah. And so why is it so important to you to support Canadian glass blowers as opposed to like maybe more um, popular glass blowers in the States or uh, in Germany or I something like, like that? I feel like the scenes basically it's still growing in Canada whereas it's it's more or less it's more established in the US and it's, it's, it's bigger there, there's no doubt. So I think we need to do all we can do to kind of, you know, keep building our glass scene, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think by supporting as many different artists as possible and you know, getting their work out there, I think that's important. Yeah, for sure. I think it's awesome because you have some artists out from BC, you got some artists out in Ontario, you got some artists from out here in New Brunswick. Yeah. That's, that's fucking awesome. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everywhere. Like it, and again, like it's cool. Uh, like I said, Squisha House, you know, they're they're one of our good buddies, right? Yeah. And they always get guys that can just drop in and bring glass and stuff, and that's the coolest thing ever. And there's only like two artists that do that here, right? Yeah. It's, you know, it's cool. It's awesome. Like that's a whole different feeling for me. But definitely. Yeah. And I think more more and more people will come out of the woodworks years to come, and I think the scene will grow around here. Mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. 
So it's growing now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're playing our part. So. And so with the scene growing, like you said, there's always new people coming out. Some people, I think, come out the gates a little bit too early. They start making work and they start trying to sell the shops immediately and stuff like that. Yeah. How often are you seeing that? What, what uh, kind of happens in that situation? That happens a lot. And, uh, you know, like I said, I don't have any problems supporting a guy that's up and coming, you know, because a lot of the time everybody has to start somewhere, right? Exactly. So, yep. Um, and again, if they can come with a perfect price point with a perfect product that will sell in our shop, you know what I mean? Nine out of ten times we're gonna we're gonna put their work in our in our displays, right? Yeah, so. for sure. Talked a little bit about expanding the Canadian glass scene and how you're doing that now. What are some further steps that you might be thinking about or you might want to see to maybe bring the Canadian glass game up more? Uh well just like I said, I mean, what you're doing personally, you know, like you even being here, just interviewing me today, like that's that's really cool, right? Um, you're playing your part, and just what you're doing is huge as well, right? So you Thanks, go, man, you, you need a, you definitely need a pat on the back as well, right? But I mean, we're just like I said, I'm still learning every day, and you know, happy to be here doing what I'm doing, and hopefully I'm here, you know, next year doing it too. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Who are some artists that you want to bring into the shop that you don't currently have in stock? Ah, uh, probably John K, Hippos, Beta. You know those those three. Corey. Yeah. Those four come to mind immediately. We got a couple artists right now that are uh, about to drop. A couple new artists that we haven't gotten in yet. A few actually, three I think. Um, Great. I'm not gonna release them right now. It'll yeah. Be a surprise. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, those four definitely I can see me reaching out to here in the near future for sure to, to get some work. Out for sure. Here. What do you see for the future of Unique Boutique? Uh, of us, for our shop, uh, like I said, man, I, I, like I said, our China cabinet's getting smaller here. I would eventually like to see that we don't sell any of this type of stuff, the proto stuff, mm -hmm. and be all Canadian glass like some of the other shops out there. But uh, like I said, we're just, we're gonna build to that. We're gonna eventually get to that point. Uh, we're overwhelmed with the support that we've gotten from just everywhere across the country. Like I said, um, maybe open another shop somewhere down the line in another, you know, another city, or mm -hmm. you never know. It's just there's the sky's the limit, right? Definitely, yeah, the sky's the limit. Thank you for coming out here, and you know, just like I said, showing the New Brunswick that we do have, you know, a glass community out here, and it's growing, and we're playing our part, and like I said, just. You know, that's awesome, right? And we're gonna keep doing that and try to grow the the Canadian scene as big as we possibly can. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well thanks for having me, dude. I yeah, had a really awesome Stop time. Out. For sure.